All right, dear students, my name is Victoria Olegovna Livinska. I have joined this year in January British Management University. I've been working before uh, at Westminster University for a number of years in the management team. And I'm uh, quite familiar with different international organizations and international programs. So I will provide you with overview of such programs, which are available for you first as uh, citizens of Uzbekistan and the second as BMU students. So I will divide my presentation into three slots. The first, I will provide you with hints how to uh, make your mind, how to choose a program, then what kind of programs are available and what BMU is offering for you. So if it is all right, I will continue. Okay, just a moment, I'm moving. So we will talk about uh, as undergraduate as well as postgraduate programs which are available in Uzbekistan. Uh, if you have some questions, I would advise you to leave them until the end. And uh, uh, please name, uh, you know, identify yourself. Please, uh, you know, tell me who you are. I will uh, write your name and last name down. And what kind of questions do you have? Because I'm planning to organize a number of sessions which would be dedicated to particular programs you are interested in, in next few weeks. So this is how it's going to work. Uh, we have quite a rich uh, content of our first program, of our first webinar, so you can introduce. It is recorded, so the webinar itself and the slides which I'm showing to you are going to be available for you as well. So if you are not able to understand something or you have missed an opportunity to ask questions, you can watch throughout the slides and uh, approach me individually. So this is how it's going to work. Okay. First of all, um, I know from my students, I'm in academia for 30 years, I'm Westminster students and students of other universities I'm teaching, that they are just want to go abroad. And they don't know what to, or how to specify their wish. So you have to, first of all, you have to understand what kind of goals, what kind of uh, aims you are pursuing. You want to have international cultural experience or you want to get MA degree or BA degree. You just want to go for work and travel or get internships uh, in order to uh, in order to understand, you know, I mean, the life over there, or just you want to get your education and immigrate in some other country. Next, what you have to consider is geographical location. Usually, uh, abroad is a very vague symbol, so you have to think that, well, in different countries, the education system is different, and it requires you, although the some requirements are quite universal, but there are some peculiarities which uh, would allow you to study in this particular country. So for example, if you want to go to United States, it is one education system. If you want to go to Britain, it is another education system. If you want to go to South Korea, to the third one. So there are different requirements and geographic location is very important. If you want to apply for Australian university, although there's a uh, British education, uh, you know, I mean, uh, framework they're using over there, but there are some uh, universities have some peculiarities and some additional requirements might be. Then you have to consider your budget. Well, what kind of mode you are choosing? If it is self-paid -pay mode, you have to concentrate on one thing. If it is a scholarship you want to obtain, it would be different timeline and it would be different requirements uh, or scores you have to present as a minimum to apply for the scholarship because scholarship have, uh, scholarships have minimum requirements. So you have to know 
whether you are suitable or not suitable for this particular requirement. And those requirements are differ from the university to the university. So sometimes you have to organize like uh, case by case uh, or university by university, uh, you know, I mean, communication in order to find out what kind of requirements this university has. So those kind of things uh, we are have to take into consideration when we are looking for our study abroad. Okay, then uh, you need to prepare. Uh, I have a vast international experience. I got my PhD from United States and I've been to many uh, international programs and handling many international programs. What can I provide you? In order to start, better not to procrastinate, better to start as early as possible. I would say one year ahead. So you have to identify your priorities first. What is your main goal? As we already discussed, and what are your means? Why you, and uh, what you want to have just a summer school or some course, or you want to have the full degree? Uh, geographical location, UK, US, EU, Southeast Asia, Canada, Canada, they all have different universities and different requirements. Then you have to go down to the university. You have to identify university. Uh, better to do the big list and then to do short listing to the three, for example, because it has to be matching your own means, what your program are you looking for? And do you, does this university within your budget range? Or for example, you want to study at this university because this university has vast international programs or internships, which will allow you to work after the graduation. So all these things are very important when you are choosing the university. And uh, you have to check about available scholarship. But, you know, I mean, the, every scholarship has its timeline. The timeline, uh, the beginning of the deadlines for the scholarships in some universities can be in November, December, but the latest, it is mid-February. If you are starting to look for the scholarship, for example, in January or in February, it is a little bit late. In March, it is too late. So you have to think about it as well. Then you have to uh, allow yourself two to three months to collect application documents to have a uh, decent and well-rounded well application. Because uh, you will be competing with thousands and thousands of other students all over the world. Because, uh, you know, universities usually have the biggest like 20 places for international students and scholarships and they are specifying them the regions. So for example, uh, if everybody for the scholarship applying for the Central Asia, they probably uh, would not allow all of them to be from Central Asia because scholarship which they are offering, they have to be distributed among different, different uh, uh, you know, geographical locations, different, you know, I mean, uh, some of them can be, you know, I mean, uh, aiming on the disabled people or people of the particular, profession and stuff like that. So all those things, all those technicalities, you have to know in advance in order to prepare a competitive application. So I have prepared the 10 steps which you have to uh, undertake if you are aiming for the fall 2023. This is, uh, you have to start searching as soon as you decided what you want. Then January to March, uh, this is, time and you have to understand what your application needs. In general, explore, understand what the application process be like at this particular university. So if you want to apply for fall 2023, you already have to be uh, down uh, to shortlist that universities which you are really interested in applying. Then uh, you have to know that you have to write an essay. Do it in advance. 
as soon as you uh, know the topic of this, say, because it is a part of the application procedure, you have to start drafting. You have to do research of the topic of your essay. Uh, you have to get some statistic. You are drafting an essay and you are giving it for the proofreading to your teachers or to your mates or whatever, uh, because it is a crucial part of the application. Then March to July, July prepare for IELTS or any other relevant test. And uh, if you have some problems with English or you think that your score is 6.0 or 6.5 is not good enough to apply for the scholarship, think about how to improve your score. Then you will uh, get your score to September to November. You will need to make a college aware that you are applying for the university and uh, you have to choose the university and ask for the financial aid. Sometimes uh, the universities are very slow to respond because they have many, many encounters, you know, I mean, from different parts of the world. And they are actually the, uh, some universities are not aware about what a financial aid do they have. Uh, until the academic year starts, because the budget usually in uh, Western universities is from October to October. So you have to uh, do, all, do all of those inquiries in advance. So all of those inquiries in advance. Then uh, make a short listing of those universities who responded to you, who have suitable financial aid for you, who have suitable programs for you, uh, who are interested in you. So uh, you might be interested in the university, but my, they might not be interested in you because uh, for this particular program, they are not having opening or whatever. So those kind of things also have to be taken into consideration. And uh, by that time, your documents need to be ready. So you have to provide your transcripts. You have to provide recommendation letters from a um, uh, reliable source. So for example, if some of your, uh, some of your, you know, I mean, uh, classmates will write it or somebody who is not capable or, or, you know, I mean, your family member or something like that. So recommendation letters are very important because universities usually con uh, connecting to the referee and asking about the students. So they are trying to understand that this person is real and this person is cap capable of provide the reference to, to, this, uh, to, to the student. Then you have to prepare your bank statement. If you have some money under your pillow, it's probably not enough. So the money has to be in the bank and uh, the university would check this bank account when it was originated, uh, you know, I mean, what kind of money they are and stuff like that. Is it money laundering? So is it reputable thing and stuff like that. Uh, you have to provide probably some documents about your parent income that, or your own income that you would be able to support yourself during your study. So everything else, uh, everything uh, like this, it takes time to be prepared. Therefore, uh, get it in advance. November, uh, do the application. I always, uh, I, I always been against last minute applications because uh, I've been in a, a, a committee of some of the universities for scholarship and uh, you are reading a thousand and thousand scholarships, uh, uh, essays, and you are going through all of them. So for example, when you are rushing uh, toward the deadline, it's not only good, not very good for you, but not very good for the revise, uh, you know, I mean, people like me, revisers of the applications, because we have to read like 20 or 25 or 40 or 45 in one day, and they all mixed up. It's my own hint, better to do it in advance when you have only two or three applications to read, you remember them well, you can provide feedback, you are actually, you know, more interested 
therefore your chances to get the scholarship or being admitted is much much more it's much higher you know i mean if you are not waiting until the last moment uh so late december january you are getting your results and uh, applying for regular decision and in march usually the decision of the scholarship committee coming into the place so always uh, try to uh, secure yourself secure your place apply for self-paid mode and apply for scholarship so if you really want to go abroad you have to consider both options well that's the first things i wanted to do, tell to you regarding your preparation so if you have questions regarding this part of my presentation you are welcome you can uh, you know i mean you can write them down in the chat room okay all right i will read i will read them well let's move on let's move on to what is available and what you are looking let's say you are interested in international cultural experience you won't just go abroad I've been, uh, you know, I mean, uh, with my students to London, working at Westminster University and seeing students in London many times in the United States as well. So uh, the best way to do it is summer school. Summer school is usually a place, you know, when you are doing not only study, but you are doing a lot of sightseeing, cultural experiences, you are meeting people from all over the world, and it's a wonderful thing. Another program is can be language program. So, for example, you are going for the language program, uh, not necessarily to, for example, to UK. Uh, in 2019, some of my students were going to uh, Tartu University to study Estonian language. I don't know how where they were advanced in the in the Estonian, but they were absolutely happy because. It provided them with the Schengen visa, and after summer school, they were able to travel, you know, to Scandinavian countries from Estonia because, you know, it's a very close destination and stuff like that. There are also non-degree exchange programs such as UGREAT, such as a uh, program provided by Erasmus or by British Council. There is also uh, many conferences, youth forums, forums, summer camps volunteering opportunities, uh, you know, I mean, internships which you can do in summer, all those programs are also available for cultural experience and of course work and travel. Um, I have been uh, providing you information about work and travel um, in United States, the most famous program. However, for example, some other governments also provide work and travel for the students, such as, for example, Finland, uh, you know, government or, you know, I mean, some Southeast Asia, like Singapore, they also have work and travel programs. They're less uh, known. However, uh, at this moment, um, because of the COVID is still a problem in many countries, I don't think that uh, option is very, uh, has a very high probability. So let's move on. I have provided with, uh, some schools which are fully funded and uh, i have provided with the links to the summer schools which are fully funded usually it is germany that in uh, having uh, summer courses and they are uh, if you are admitted by the university you can apply for the scholarship and that will cover it including your airfare uh, there is also other uh, scholarship which are available for international students which are going directly from, from the summer school administration uh, so i have provided some web links over here uh, you can if you're interested in these summer schools you can apply yourself uh, going through the procedure or if you are having problems with that i was a director of many international summer schools you know back 10 or 12 years ago so i know how the application is working at least so and winter school i also was directing so uh the application is working i can you provide you with some hints um there are also virtual 
uh, summer schools and courses. So for example, if you're bored and you want to get some additional certificate, which actually, you know, I mean, another thing, uh, what is good about summer schools and many programs, um, it is your AR record. There is um, in many, uh, uh, so there is two records which uh, universities are interested in. The first is your academic record. And the second one is your achievement record. So what is achievement record? Achievement record, this is something which is uh, extracurricular. So for example, they know that you're a student union president, or you have organized a club, MUN club, or you have provided, or you have thousands of certificates and volunteering, uh, uh, volunteering activities, or you have participated in summer schools and many other international programs. All those certificates you can collect and when you're applying for the degree program, it is a very big help. It is a prompt which will distinguish you from other students. So in this case, if you work like, uh, uh, you know, I mean, applying for the World Scholarship Forum, probably you will not get cultural experience as much as going for the summer school, but it will provide you with a certificate, which could be a good prompt, prompt for further you know, for your father's studies and stuff like that. So never, never uh, uh, underestimate the importance of it. It is called achievement tracker. All right, there is some self-paid modes and I also provided with the links to the self-paid. They have within the different range, price range, but I will tell you that uh, UK schools are the most expensive. So if you are thinking about going to UK, you have to think something about like 3000 pounds. That's an, an average price. It can be more, it can be less by, by 500 pounds. Sometimes uh, summer schools are giving discounts like 10 to 15%, but this is what you have to estimate, this amount you have estimate when you apply. Summer schools in Europe can be less expensive. Uh, it can be in the range of 1500. Um, well, yes, and uh, uh, summer schools in Asia can be in the range of 1200. So this is a range of payment which you have to prepare for summer school. But think also that you have to get Schengen, you have to get UK visa, and you have to provide your bank account that it has to be more than 3,000, that you have to provide that you have some money extra in order to get visa. All right, I want to show you one summer school, which I know personally, this summer school is very well established. Uh, it is in Belgium and it calls uh, Solway Summer School. So they are in existence for the last 15 years and they always have the same dates. August 12th to August 21. Why I have picked up uh, this particular summer school? Just because it has a subject which we are studying here at BMU, such as public policy, business law, finance, entrepreneurship. And uh, it's a very well established summer school. So they have wonderful trips around the country and Belgium is a beautiful country. They have also uh, good accommodation and private room, which is usually UK schools don't have. And uh, you also get some EST credits, which will uh, help you to proceed if you want to study in Europe. You know, I mean, proceed, you can add to your, uh, to your uh, credits. Uh, there are a, a different range from uh, full, like 500 to 15 uh, to 1000 euros, which is also a moderate price, including accommodation. It's a kind of moderate price for the school. And if you apply before March 31, you can get some discount. So um, the, I provided you with the link. You can enter this link and check the summer school itself. Okay, uh, let's move on. I'm just uh, trying to hide my messages. Uh, some of them were interested in USA exchange programs in uh, global U grade. 
Uh, this program is non-degree program. Unfortunately, uh, for next year, it is too late because uh, January 6 was uh, the deadline for the full semester. However, the next deadline going to be in November. Um, it's usually November 15 to November 20. And you can apply as for spring as well as for full semester of the next year. So they have uh, rolling deadlines, uh, you know, I mean, uh, usually. So uh, what is uh, global you grade? You cannot choose a university. The university has to be chosen by you, by the, uh, not by you, by the State Department. But you can express your wish. So for example, you can say that uh, you are applying for this, you know, range of the universities because you know the faculty or you know that the business school there is just top of the top. But when you are doing your research for your grade and choosing the university, remember that you have to write two motivation letter. One letter is about um, what you want to study and why do you want to, to study these particular things. When you are writing, please uh, spend uh, some time on researching the universities, on uh, what kind of programs do they have, and how it is compatible to what you are studying over here. And also important for you to, to give them a hint that what you want to do in your future. So for example, you are really concerned about, um, I don't know, I mean, the unemployment rate, rate in Karakal, Pakistan. There is uh, youth, is 90% of the youth studying, uh, you know, I mean, are not able to find their jobs within their own premises. They have to immigrate, immigrate to other regions of Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. And you are really concerned about it. And you know that this particular university offering a very good uh, program on migration and unemployability and stuff like that. So you can mention it in your essay. So your essay should be not about everything, but it has to be very, very precise uh, about what you want, how do you want, and what are you going to do upon graduation. Uh, if you are a women leader and you already proved that you are a women leader, for example, you are defending the animal rights or you are doing some kind of language courses for disadvantaged group of the population, stuff like that, that you have a proof that you have an active, active uh, life position, you can apply for a uh, Young Women Leaders Program, the, uh, which is called SUSI. And uh, it's also for students and postgraduate students and undergraduate students, they, they are eligible to apply. So these uh, things will allow you to uh, go to United States for summer program up to three months. That's a very, also a very good program. I have uh, not attended myself, but I know students who were attending, who, 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 whom I was provided the reference and they were attending and they were all, always uh, very happy because it always goes to good universities. So they have a rolling up of, because it is sponsored by the State Department, they have a rolling up of the universities. Uh, one year it was Stanford, one year it was Duke, so um, that's a program I can really recommend. The deadline is in December, sorry guys, so next year only. <laughs> um, okay, next. Work and travel. I'm asking a lot of questions regarding work and travel, but uh, we are actually, Galip is with us, we are actually uh, planning to organize a session with the uh, U.S. counselor who would be able to answer all your questions regarding uh, work and travel. I know some general information about work and travel that as a student of BIM, you are, you are eligible because you are studying. So there are uh, um, certain ground rules, certain things which you have to perform. So you have to be very well uh, they have to be fluent in English because uh, this is the main thing. You have to uh, study in one of the universities which are 
eligible studies in Uzbekistan, and uh, at least one semester you have to complete. So all of you who are studying at BMU are eligible for these ground rules. However, um, for some uh, technicalities for this particular academic year, I think that uh, better to organize a separate session and with Zion probably we will work together, you know, to organize this session. Yes, and you can ask some direct questions because uh, the rules are the rules, but the situation with COVID and uh, with situation with what is going on sometimes, you know, put a lot of uncertainty, which probably we are not able to handle yes at the moment because we don't know all the all the details. Okay, another things which are I really recommend you to look at is Erasmus Plus program. Erasmus Plus uh, had a gap year because they were uh, in a process of reshaping their program and they were in process of uh, 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 kind of introducing new programs. You know that uh, UK is out and now they are re uh, reconsidering the universities and stuff like that. I will keep you posted about Erasmus because I'm working very closely uh, with Erasmus and we now trying to put BMU probably next year, we will be able to apply for Erasmus program ourselves. We, be, we are now looking for European partners and for Uzbek partners to apply together in order to have a rolling opportunities for the student for exchange to our partner university. Uh, there is also another program, which is a sister program for Erasmus. It is a UK program, Turing. But in order to uh, apply for Turing, we cannot apply ourselves as a BMU. It has to be one of the British University. So we are also in communication with Reading regarding Turing, applying for, uh, regarding uh, applying together with BMU for Turing program, but Turing program is not one way, not like Erasmus. It has to be students coming from UK to Uzbekistan and students from Uzbekistan coming to the UK. So Erasmus is much easier and much more wide. It has different, different, has 65 programs altogether. They're standing alone, they're financing, they have different rolling deadlines. And uh, they are starting from the sport programs, you know, youth sport programs to education programs. Sometimes there are consortiums organized within the Erasmus. One of them I just got the information about. Uh, when you have a possibility to study in four European universities during your four year studies. So because they have student mobility and they are those credits are exchangeable. You can, you know, swap from one to another. So Erasmus is a very good program. Uh, if you are just interested in going to um, abroad and gain, getting Schengen visa or whatever, another uh, prop for you is the Baltic Center. Baltic Center is uh, located here in Uzbekistan. You can call them and you can visit them in um, person. Baltic Center represents Baltic universities, but primarily Latvian universities over here, also some Estonian universities, Lithuanian less so, um, and they are actually, you know, I mean, promoting them over here. Um, what is the uh, difference between them? The application procedure is not that difficult uh, because they are really, uh, they don't have many scholarships, but um, how it works, what kind of mode it is having. So for example, you're applying for Latvian university, let's say transport university. Uh, I've been uh, to some Latvian universities, one of them transport, transport and communication university. I know the best because I've been there during my Erasmus program. And uh, so for example, you are studying there well for one year, you pay, however, uh, then, for, for the second year, you are uh, eligible to apply for scholarship. So this is how it works with uh, Baltic Center. So first year, it's always you have to pay, but then being at the university and getting good score, you are eligible to apply for the second year. So many students are using these opportunities because 
Uh, Latvian universities are not as expensive as British universities. And at the same time, they also provide you with Schengen. They provide you with permission to work part-time. They have uh, both languages, English and Russian. So this is also one of them. Uh, what I want to uh, tell you right now, that this is a link which you can follow and register right now for uh, British Council uh, advising centers. So, I mean, there are uh, advising centers in the United, uh, US Embassy as well, as well Education Advising Center. Uh, and there is also British Council doing advising center. Now they're doing everything online. And uh, you can register for 8 to 12 February for five days next week. They would be working with students, with uh, high, high school students, with students, uh, you know, undergraduate students and stuff like that about uh, studying in UK and about giving the advice how to get scholarship, what kind of scholarship available and stuff like that. So this uh, was, was one of my main kind of motivation to do this session today because, you know, I mean, for you to be able to apply for this advising session. All right, next. I'm, okay. Uh, you probably know that Uzbekistan is also offering uh, scholarships to the best students and possibilities to study abroad. Uh, in 2019, uh, in Uzbekistan was organized El Yurt Umid Foundation. You may visit their website and they are actually, you know, uh, providing 120 places for Uzbek students to study abroad and in quite prestigious universities. So the submission date uh, is very close. It is February 10th, so in six days only. So it is uh, calm down. <laughs> At the moment, they started you know, calm down from February 1st. So, um, but uh, I don't know, I mean, whether you would be able to manage this deadline for this year, but for next year, you also can consider it. Especially they have 20 places for disadvantaged group of the population. So they have uh, like a dedicated quota. And if you are proving that you are from the iron, uh, you know, I mean, notebook or whatever, use notebook, or, you know, you have like problems, you know, I mean, financial problems, your family experiencing. So you can prove them and there is 20 place dedicated to such students. So I have uh, also provided you with the different links of Iliurt Umidi Foundation. And one of the link uh, they are providing, uh, they are partnering, they have um, understanding, um, memorandum of understanding with and cooperation with some uh, universities uh, abroad like Turkish universities, European universities. So they are also used uh, your to midi foundation as the channel of communication to reach uzbek students so you are can use it uh, also for information purposes because they are announcing quite often what kind of scholarships are available in which countries and what universities and they also providing the requirement what the requirement you have to fulfill in order to apply for this scholarship well Let's talk about master's degree. I don't want to talk about it now very, very precisely, but I want to tell you one thing. Getting scholarship for master's degree is easier than getting scholarship for BA degree. Because BA students are, are those students who are feeding the university, who are making the university. And uh, with MA students, uh, they are having different goals. One of the goal is to uh, do research, is to identify good scholars and stuff like that and contribute into research capacity of the university. Unfortunately, BA students cannot do so. So master's degree, uh, master's degree is easier to obtain. And also master's degree is easier to quantify. So for example, you have your 
you know, certificate with honor, you have your marks, you have your grades. So it's easier to show to the university that you are valuable students. Much easier, uh, you know, I mean, when you have a uh, undergraduate certificate, then just to show your marks uh, as a first year or the second year students. I have identified some programs which are available in Uzbekistan. The first one is Achieving Scholarship, uh, which is managed and administrated by British Council. With this Achieving Scholarship, you are going to the university if, and when UK University admits you, you can apply for Chimnik and Chimnik will pay for your master's degree education over there, but you have to come back. Uh, US Embassy has Fulbright student program and uh, this program also pays for your master's degree, but you also have uh, obligation to come back to Uzbekistan and work for two years. Then that has a range of uh, programs in different universities. Uh, with German universities, you probably know uh, the study is for free. However, if you're applying for bachelor degree, the study would be only in German. If you're applying for master's degree, there are some universities which are offering master's degree studies in English. So you have at least possibility to study there. And you can apply university directly and uh, looking for getting scholarship, international students and stuff like that. In this slide, I provide you with different Telegram channels, which you might subscribe for and get information firsthand. Uh, this is Erasmus Plus in Uzbekistan. This is Grant Lardotus. Neopusti.net, it is a Kazakh the Telegram channel. So they are aiming uh, primarily Kazakhstan students. However, um, I'm just uh, seeing what writing in the chat. So Islam Beck is interested in, Islam Beck, if you're interested in Chivnik, we can go one by one. You can visit me or you can write to me. You can book me, let's say this way. And uh, we can uh, go in details about Chivnik. So uh, American Council for International Education, it is Axels. It is a local education. They have managing flex pro program. They have managing this uh, summer program, internship. So you may uh, get some information from them. Scholarship 365. Um, what it, it, it just will ever overwhelm you with a scholarship, but it's um, from my own experience, you have to check. So you are finding information on scholarship 365, and, but you have to double check. Sometimes they are providing information when uh, the deadlines are over, or for example, Uzbekistan is not eligible. With this uh, Telegram channel, I would be probably a little bit cautious. Germanian uh, Tashkent El Chihonasi. This is Deutsche Botschaft Tashkent. It's easier for me to say in German. I know German a little bit. And yes, I mean, this is uh, what uh, do they have through that, through Goethe, uh, Goethe Institute. They have different scholarships they are announcing, so you might find it over there. British Council Uzbekistan also have a lot of announcements. Embassy of Uzbekistan in EU and Benelux. They are just uh, putting everything possible over there. So every time if you subscribe, subscribe, you will have a hundred messages. So you have to go through them quite, uh, you know, and carefully. And uh, Profinture Stajarovki and Velaytorstva, this is a Russian channel. And that's also reliable because all other channels provide you with a degree, but those will provide you with internships. And these internships are usually going by the uh, geographic region. So they go for CIS countries, although the channel is originated in Russia, it has uh, actually use of, it is a uh, useful for us as well. Okay, I'm finishing up with my first part. So now we are going to talk about being you. So all those things, I was telling you about are for Uzbek students. Now, what is available for us as BMU students? 
We are actually working on different international programs. Some of them are quite defined. Some of them are in the process of negotiation, but they're coming up soon. So uh, I want just to provide you uh, some information which you may be interested in. And if you have questions, uh, Galip and myself, Galip, are you seeing that, you know, I mean, you are also available for answering, yes? Hi, Victoria, thanks for this. Yeah, I'm here, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody, yeah. Yes, all right. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, of course, University of Reading and Hanley Business School, which we are partnering with. Uh, we already got uh, in the process of getting validation for the foundation program. So foundation program, no, no problem. You can continue your study at wedding, uh, Reading. But if you're going for a degree program over there, you uh, have to get GPA plus minus 3.0. So better more than less <laughs> to be admitted to Hanley. So, um, as I already said, that university always look for top students. Nobody is looking for average students. And uh, this is this is uh, also thing. So scholarship opportunities uh, depends on the GPA of uh, GPA of the student. The more you have, the more uh, possibility for scholarship you have. However, uh, we are talking about partnership discount at the moment, and it can be up to at least ten percent flat rate. So, but it is a uh, case by case decision. So this is a partnership discount, which BMU is trying, is uh, getting at the partner of Hanley Business School. All right, next one. OTHM University of Chichester. It is online program for only for students of the Bachelor of Business Administration. It is online program. However, I was telling you about achievement record and how it is important to have it, you know, for your further study, for your further opportunities. So this is a wonderful opportunity for you to get it. So for example, OTHM goes for Tourism and Hospitality Management, yes, University of Chichester. And uh, uh, BMU has become an approved center with the OTHM. And uh, uh, we are uh, having different options over here. So you can apply before March for year two program. You need to take some additional courses and you have to pay for those courses approximately 100 $50 on the top of your study here, but you will get the certificate. And then you would be able to uh, proceed to year three next April. And uh, uh, by the year four, you will get two diploma. You will get BMU diploma and you will get diploma from University of Chichester. So you will have, yeah. Buy one, get two, yes, how it helps in marketing, yes. <laughs> so I think it is a wonderful opportunity. I actually myself, before going for PhD studies in the United States, I was uh, doing a lot of courses like that, which allowed me to get a scholarship. So this is a, uh, on one hand, it will allow you to work after graduation or continue your master's degree at uh, UK University. On the other hand, you can do it for a very modest price and uh, getting two, yes, getting two diplomas. So I think that uh, we are doing it online. We are London Graduate School and the one from BU from the University of Chichester. You are getting two diplomas. If you have any questions regarding it, you can write in, uh, write in uh, chat box. I will provide you with more information. Um, Okay, so this is about the pricing. I have two slides. Um, another thing, another incentive. If you will decide to study fourth year at Chichester online, you can study in both university, but you no need to pay for any tuition fees at BMU. You have to pay only for Chichester. 
which is approximately 4,000 uh, pounds. Students interested in this auction need to sign up for the OTHM program before end of March. I would say before Navruz. So please think about it. Please explore this program. Please talk to your parents and uh, sign up for the program before March because there are some uh, not very difficult requirements, but there are still some requirements which you have to uh, fulfill. And it's time consuming and it's also uh, would take, you know, you would need to provide some efforts in order to start next academic year. And now there are very promising and very uh, kind of, you know, coming up opportunities. It is for uh, those who are studying BC in accounting and finance, BC in banking and finance. Uh, we are talking to Arkansas, Arkansas State University. I know this university quite well. I know I've been to Arkansas State University in Phoenix and also in Tucson. Uh, I'm sorry, it is, uh, uh, it is Arizona, Arkansas, it is Little Rock, I'm sorry, it is Little Rock, but it's not Little Rock. So Arkansas is a decent university. It's a decent university and it's a good quality university. Uh, the difference between British education and American education, that in British education, you're getting joint degree. You are can study something similar and you can do diplomas. In United States, there is no such thing. If you are studying at Arkansas State University and studying at British Management University, you will study for two different degrees. So you will get two parallel degrees. Uh, you can start, uh, you know, with online option, and then uh, you can proceed to the, um, you know, I mean, offline uh, option on the American side. So, for example, uh, you can start uh, uh, for certain third year. You can start studying one additional module per semester, module per semester, which would cost you one thousand dollars per module, and then uh, receive two diplomas and degrees, and continue until year four. Or you can go second option. You can study for first, second, and third year here at BMU, and you can go year four to. United States. And what is good about this? So for example, if you will graduate from Arkansas State University, you will get a graduate visa, which allow you to work in the United States, will provide you with a work permit. Moreover, you will get, if you will continue to study for master's degree program, it will uh, reduce your payment for, by 50% for the further study in the United States. And uh, you can work from one till three with your graduate visa. Actually, talking about uh, Chichester University as well, uh, British government also recently, just this year, 2022, introduced graduate visa. It means that after graduation from Chichester University, you also would be able to apply for graduate visa and work in Britain for two years. Okay. Another option for you, which is uh, on the table, it is Beijing Foreign Studies University. Unfortunately, China at this particular moment is, is not COVID free. So, well, but uh, we are hoping that it's going to be op it's going to be open again next academic year. So there is a. Uh, uh, possibility for one plus three. So you are having foundation year here at BMU, and then you go to BFSU for three years and graduating there. However, uh, uh, it is, uh, you can see on the flight that it's approximately 600,000 $6, dollars. But uh, BMU students are available for scholarship 
and we will try to guide you how to uh, uh, obtain this scholarship because number of scholarship scholarship in this Chinese university is quite good you know I mean quite numerous let's uh, put it that Beijing Foreign Studies University it is Chinese Gimo it is preparing the diplomat they have uh, you know I mean uh, concentrated on foreign studies on different languages as well and uh, it's a very good university it is a as Arkansas said, it is a decent university, but among other Chinese universities, considered one of the top. And moreover, it is in Beijing, which is the capital of China. So a lot of cultural life, a lot of city life. So it is a very good option. And uh, we are actually um, talking with uh, BFSU at the moment. We are doing finishing up the module mapping between the two universities. And we are thinking about sending to this university up to 20 students. All right, another ongoing project. If, uh, you know, I'm doing like this, you know, if COVID permits, we are thinking about organization of the BMU, thinking about organization of summer school at Cambridge University and, uh, uh, with the help of the University of Reading, which would have a very interesting cultural program, which would a very interesting academic program. However, everything estimated cost, which you have to prepare for this is around $3,000. But I'm telling you that this is uh, the cost of only tuition fees, uh, summer schools it, at these universities. But this cost is everything, including your uh, trains, visa, you know, airfare from Tashkent to uh, London, you know, train from London to Cambridge. So it's a very competitive cost. Uh, if you will apply uh, independently for summer school, it would be only your tuition cost and everything else you would need to pay extra. And, uh, but uh, now, I mean, because of the COVID, we are uh, a little bit slow in uh, communication because uh, there are some uh, kind of uh, situation of uncertainty, but we are working on it as well. If whether there is an interest from BMU students, if I uh, found, found that there is interest from your side in, in summer school, I will push it much harder, okay? All right. Okay, I'm... Uh, almost exceeding my time i think yes <laughs> it's one hour if you need to uh, meet me in person uh, please uh, approach me write me email and i will tell you when and how and ask your questions over the email as well if you have some very precise questions which i need to answer i would be happy to do so but now i'm ready for the question answer session there's a question from amir in the chat room, in the chat box. Uh, yeah, they're asking about Chimning, well, more information about Chimning. Uh, you are <laughs> talking about Chimning scholarship. Chimning scholarship is very competitive. They have up to 20 scholarships for master's degree. However, one of the requirements for the Chimning program is to have work experience. So if you don't have work experience, I would really encourage you to start doing internships or, you know, find that, uh, you know, find something. And also you have, um, I have uh, helping students to fill out the application form. You have to have very precise goal, what you want to study, why this particular university, for example, you want to study at Cambridge. Cambridge is extremely expensive. But uh, you want to study only at Cambridge and you have to persuade Chimning why Cambridge, why they have to pay for this particular university. Or for example, if you are doing language program, you're saying that I want to go to Warwick because Warwick has the best language program for pedagogists and I would be able to implement all what I have studied in my uh, working experience. So this is what you have to look at. What are you looking at? You know, how are you going to implement and why this university? 
Um, in terms of uh, your work experience, you cannot work anywhere and just you know apply for something. It's not only work experience anywhere. It's not only years. Uh, like with, for example, Fulbright Studentship Program, you can work somewhere. You just to show you have to show that you have been working for two years. But here you have to be quite precise, thinking that all everything I'm doing is leading to this uh, program, leading to this university. I have doing it already. I have been excelling, excelling in this program, but I need some additional theoretical knowledge. Therefore, I'm choosing this university. Therefore, I'm applying for this program. Mm -hmm. uh, how much will it cost? What are the benefits of going to the trip? I didn't understand this question. What trip you have in mind? I think the, the previous slide, about, uh, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I'm telling you that you have to make your mind. What are you looking for? If you are looking only for the cultural experience, this is a trip. So uh, <laughs> this is a benefit. Yeah. You go abroad, you are uh, going to Cambridge University, and you can say that I've been to Cambridge University, studied there in summertime. You will get your certificate, so which will allow you to uh, build up your portfolio, your achievement record. And uh, also you will, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know, I mean, you will have an interesting summer. I always um, been going for summer school myself. My daughter is studying at Westminster. I always been encouraging her to go for summer school. She was going to many of them. That's, but she was interested in cultural experience. If you are not interested, apply for online it would be for free you will get your knowledge and you will get your certificate you have a lot of options now all right uh guys i'm uh, very uh, happy to make a first encounter with you hopefully my session would be useful was useful for you just to start up thinking about in international uh you know experience however uh, we will continue and do it program by program and we start. We will start with those which are offering B, by BNU, which mm. are uh, we are doing because we need to know what are the interest rate among you. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Victoria. It was a very helpful session for our students, I think, and for some others who are not even students at BMU. It will be a, a good opportunity if they are not part of BMU. They should be. <laughs> they should be, and to get these opportunities. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining.